Hey guys, so this week I've been playing Dragon's Dogma, which, if you don't know, is a Japanese uh, RPG that just came out. It's kind of like a hybrid of, like, Dark Souls and, like, Skyrim, because it's, it's got, like, the combat of, of Dark Souls, but sort of the open-worldness, uh, exploring questness of, you know, a, a Skyrim open-world type game. So it's this kind of hybrid coming out from Capcom, who isn't really known for their hardcore RPG. So, is it any good? Well, here's my opinion. Dragon's Dogma. At first glance, Dragon's Dogma seems like a pretty standard sort of generic RPG. Essentially, the story is that every so often, like every generation or so, this giant dragon shows up and just starts destroying everything. And it's up to the mystical chosen one known as the Arisen to stop the dragon. And you can tell you're the Arisen because you're the one that the dragon rips out your heart and eats it, and you survive. And like with any good fantasy RPG, there's a really robust character customization menu so you can kind of make your character look however you want. And of course, this sexy little devil here is my character who I named Derp Lundgren. So now that your character is made and had its heart ripped out and eaten by a dragon, it's his job to venture across the world, defeating all the various griffins and harpies and goblins that he comes across in order to gain enough strength and power to take down the mighty dragon. There's three basic classes to choose from. You know, you got your, your warrior, you got your archer guy, and you got your magic guy. And then as you progress through the game, you can kind of create a, a subclass and can be more of a specialized mage or maybe a warrior mage or a guy who shoots fiery arrows or, you know, kind of customize yourself, which is pretty cool. While your character might be the mighty risen who did the heroic act of getting his heart eaten by a dragon, you don't go through the game alone. The game has you being followed around by NPC characters called pawns. These are basically guys that follow you around and fight for you. And you can go around and you can hire different pawns that you see running around the world. And you can customize one specific pawn that's like your main pawn that sticks with you no matter what. You see, only the Arisen can really command the pawns because the pawns aren't exactly human. Uh, which kind of explains why they just kind of follow you and will go into battle and do anything you want. And when I say anything you want, I mean anything but shut the hell up. Sir, what do you propose? <laughs> As they follow you throughout the world, the pawns will constantly comment on everything that they see. Sometimes it will be helpful information about the quests or the monsters that you're fighting, but mostly it's the same crap that we'll be talking about over and over and over again, and they all talk at the same time. It's just so frustrating. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! That's it. I'm throwing your asses in the sea. I, I can't take it anymore. When you're out in the world hiring pawns, you're not just hiring random pawns that have been generated by the game or pre-scripted pawns, you're actually hiring the pawns of people actually playing Dragon's Dogma around the world. The game doesn't have any real co-op features, but what it does have is this sort of online pawn sharing, where your friends can actually rent out your pawn, and uh, you'll get a little bit of money from that, and your pawn will actually gain quest knowledge about quests that maybe you haven't even done yet, if your friends take it out on that quest. It's not quite as cool as, like, online co-op and playing with your friends, but it's it's the next best thing. Although I'm not quite sure how I feel about, you know, pimping out my pawns. That just feels weird. I try to speak or remain silent as the situation demands. You're damn right, ho. You better keep that mouth shut. This better not be all the money you got me. I will smack a bitch. Combat-wise, the game's quite a lot like Dark Souls in that you kind of start out with only the two attacks, you know, light attack and strong attack, but you gain more attacks. Not a, a ton of attacks, but a number of attacks. And while running around fighting, you know, groups of goblins or bandits or skeletons is all right, you know, the real meat of this gameplay is fighting these big mythical creatures. Like, a griffin will show up and you have to take down a griffin. And it's more than just, you know, stab it till it's dead, because the fights are, you know, kind of dynamic. You know, the, the griffins can fly, obviously, so it'll take off. So you gotta find a way to, like, bring it down to the ground. Or you'll fight a chimera, and you have to, like, chimera's got three heads. Well, you gotta take it out one head at a time, otherwise you're wasting your time. And besides just stabbing it and sh throwing fire at it and filling it with arrows, you can also climb on it. Because these monsters are so massive, you actually get the ability to like jump and like grab and like climb up the cyclops and start stabbing into the back where it's the weakest. And throughout it, your pawns are obviously yelling inane crap at you that doesn't help at all, but you know, at least they are fighting. These fights can actually last quite a while, and it's supposed to be this big epic, you know, sort of climax moment where you're like fighting it for like 20 minutes or whatever, and you finally stab it in the eye and it falls over dead, and you can loot its corpse and be like, oh my god, I just took down a griffin. 
The fights are definitely very fun and the highlight of the game, but some of the problems with the game is obviously the combat, although it's very modeled after Dark Souls, misses some of the points. In Dark Souls, you die because it was your fault, because you didn't time an attack right, or you were standing in the wrong location, or all that kind of stuff. In Dragon's Dogma, you died because the computer decided to chain a bunch of attacks that you couldn't possibly plan for all at once that you had no way of avoiding and couldn't possibly survive. And of course, the checkpoint system and the save system, it leaves something to desire, so you go, Oh, hey, I, I died. Oh, look, I lost three hours of gameplay. That's great. So I'm a bit wishy-washy about uh, Dragon's Dogma because, uh, I don't know, I don't know how I feel exactly, because it, it's fun at times, and then times it's frustrating. It tries to be both, you know, Demon Souls and then it also tries to be like the open worldness of a, of a Skyrim or Oblivion or something. And it kind of falls somewhere in between and it's not really good at doing either one all that particularly. But it's got its moments. I think as like an entry into the genre is sort of a, a, a new step for Capcom. They're not really into the, the open world RPGs all that much. It, it's kind of an interesting sort of step in and I think maybe when like Dragon's Dogma 2 comes out maybe it'll be like amazing. But this one's just kind of okay. So if you're looking for a game that's, you know, got its billion teen hours of, of gameplay and exploration and killing griffins, then maybe this is a game for you. But if you still haven't played Dark Souls, then maybe wait, maybe get through that first. But it's kind of a fun game.